In around the year 60 BC, off the coast of the small Greek island of Antikythera in the Aegean Sea, it is theorized that possibly common harsh northern winds known as the Meltimi, or likewise other sea storms, may have shipwrecked a relatively large ancient vessel carrying one of the world's most peculiar artifacts to the bottom of the sea for nearly 2,000 years, the Antikythera mechanism. But what is this? In the year 1900, a team of sponge divers, led by Captain Dimitros Kantos, a very fitting name for a Greek captain, discovered the shipwreck and recovered an ancient treasure trove of marble and bronze statues, pottery, jewelry, coins, and the corroded remains of what appeared to be a complex mechanism. Little did they know, this discovery would prove to be, perhaps, the most remarkable piece of ancient technology ever discovered. The evidence discovered in the shipwreck points toward a Greek origin for the artifact, but has never been linked to a specific craftsman or workshop. The artifact was not only obviously far beyond the perceived technological capabilities of the ancient world, it was beyond the capability of the time in which it was found. To reproduce this mechanism in the late 1800s to the turn of the century would have been an enormous feat and a leap in engineering. It was not until the late 1960s that scientists began to understand the capabilities of the Antikythera as technology caught up to it. That fact alone is truly staggering and exciting. The mechanism itself is dated to the mid-2nd century BC, or around 150 BC. This falls right at the end of the Hellenistic world in ancient Greece, really during its last days. Hellenistic Greece was a land of great prosperity that lived on the shoulders of great kings like Alexander the Great and Philip II, which created a vast empire with an incredible amount of resources and wealth. This time seems to have inspired a great amount of ingenuity. Scholars and scientists flourish in the Hellenistic period, producing renowned inventors such as Archimedes, Euclid, and Eratosthenes of which these scientists made groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of mathematics, physics, and astronomy. Their work laid the foundation of many principles that still influence modern science. Archimedes in particular is praised for several great inventions including the Archimedes screw, which was used widely throughout the ancient world for its ability to, simply put, raise and drain water levels. Another notable invention attributed to Archimedes is the Iron Claw. A device that was, according to ancient sources, able to reach out, hook, and partially lift enemy vessels out of the water and capsize them into the sea. Ancient texts tell us that these quote-unquote claws played a prominent role in the Roman attack on Syracuse in 212 BC. While the authenticity of this invention in particular is disputed, Modern experiments have shown that with the resources available to the Greeks living in the 3rd century BC, it would in fact have been possible to construct this iron claw. Because of these inventions and many others, Archimedes is commonly thrown in as a placeholder for the unnamed inventor of the enigmatic Antikythera mechanism. An invention which, by all accounts, exceeds even his own inventions in complexity, design, and applicability even with the limited amount that we know of its functions. The device is made of a series of 37 interlocking bronze gears of various sizes, each of which have been determined to represent astronomical cycles such as the sun's movement, lunar phases, planetary positions, and even the irregular orbit of the moon. Also, this irregular lunar motion was studied and noted by Greek astronomer Hipparchus, who potentially could have been consulted or played a part in the creation of this device. But we'll touch on that more later. All of the astronomical bodies and events that the Antikythera mechanism is hypothesized to align to are aspects of astronomy that the Greeks would have been aware of during the 2nd century BC. On the front of the device are dials that account for the Greek zodiac, calendar months, and additional indicators for solar and lunar functions. In theory, by turning a crank, the operator could set or align the position of celestial bodies or astronomical events. It is also theorized that the device may have had predictive capabilities as well, potentially the ability to predict the path of celestial bodies and events like solar and lunar eclipses and even lunar phases. And finally, the mechanism could also accurately track the timing of the solar and lunar calendar, 
one could imagine that this may have been used to potentially and much more conveniently predict the time of religious festivals, events, and other significant dates, perhaps even to calculate the exact time of the next Olympic Games, which, like today, were held every four years in ancient Greece. The Antikythera mechanism is the earliest known analog computer ever found. And we can call it this because, one, it comprises of an intricate interlocking system of gears and dials. Two, it has an array of predictive capabilities whereby turning the dials, the moving gears can simulate relative motions of celestial bodies. Three, when turning the dials, the moving gears cause a display that calculates the positions of the sun, moon, planets, and lunar phases. And four, it was able to track and display the passage of time. However, it is important to note that a machine as advanced as this very likely had a long string of prototypes leading up to it. Perhaps one prototype per specific function. One device for tracking the moon, one device for tracking the sun, one device for tracking planetary paths and positions, and so on, until they were eventually condensed into one device. Furthermore, the context of the shipwreck and the epigraphic evidence such as the inscriptions on the mechanism seem to align with the 2nd century BC, in other words, sometime between 200 BC and 100 BC, after the lifetime of the acclaimed Greek inventors such as Archimedes from the 3rd century BC. What we may be able to infer from the discovery of this device if we hypothesize a bit, and this is YouTube, so why not? is that the economic prosperity of the Hellenistic period following the successful military campaigns of Philip and Alexander brought about a vast array of technological innovation with a number of scientists or inventors who were potentially far beyond in capability and progression than the names that we are familiar with, again, such as Archimedes, Eratosthenes, Hipparchus, Aristarchus, and even Ptolemy, who would come much later on. Say, for instance, if the device were created in 150 BC, like modern archaeologists estimate, Hipparchus would have actually been alive during this time and likely would have either seen this device, been consulted during its creation, or potentially he even played a part in its creation. As Hipparchus is claimed for his scientific contributions to our cataloging of celestial bodies, understanding planetary movements, and even some of our first models of the sun and moon. It is also indicative that other unnamed scientists of equal esteem were contemporaries to Hipparchus and played a great role in the creation of this device. We unfortunately do not know the names of these other scientists, the prototypes leading up to this device, or other further inventions, because ancient texts are very difficult to preserve. Even the knowledge of Archimedes was lost for centuries following his death during the sack of Syracuse in 212 BC. However, eventually it reemerged in the Middle Ages around 1,500 years later. But why is this the only mechanism found? Shouldn't there be others? Well, this is a difficult question to answer, but here is an idea. Bronze was an extremely valuable metal in the ancient world. I mean, we have an entire age named after it. Its uses were numerous, and when land was conquered, often valuable metals were melted down and repurposed for things such as sculptures and artworks, tools and weapons, or even minted into lesser value coins. And with the way that, at times, average soldiers took care of valuable items, it's easy to see why valuable items from ancient times just aren't around anymore. Take, for instance, the orders of the Roman commander Marcus Claudius Marcellus not to kill Archimedes during the conquest of Syracuse. Marcellus had great admiration for Archimedes' intellect and scientific achievement. Despite this direct order to preserve Archimedes' life, Archimedes was slain during the siege by an unnamed Roman soldier, and it is thought that amidst the chaos of the conflict, many of his inventions and potential future achievements as well were lost. Suffice to say that the very earliest prototypes of the Antikythera mechanism may very well have set on the tables or benches in his residence at Syracuse the morning of the siege, and by the next morning were being melted into bronze ingots among the smoldering ruins of the city. Over the next several hundred years, Rome's influence and dominance over Greece would grow continuously, likely resulting in the loss of more and more ancient Greek inventions that were crafted out of metals that Roman soldiers saw as useful or valuable. 
One can easily imagine in the heat of battle storming into an illustrious, perhaps awe-inspiring palace or villa of a wealthy inventor and seeing the valuable metals and trinkets that could be taken with no consequence. Thus, leaving the only place for a priceless bronze device to be preserved is in the tight grasp of an unknown, unnamed, ancient Greek inventor standing in the hull of a sinking ship off the coast of the island Antikythera. I'm Luke Caverns. If you enjoyed these videos giving you a peek into the life and strange artifacts of the ancient world, well then please like and subscribe for more as that's really all you have to do to help out the channel. As always, thank you so much to my YouTube members and patrons who make everything that I do possible. For more videos on ancient civilizations, please like and subscribe for more.